Thank you once again, councillors, and welcome to the council meeting this evening. May I extend a warm welcome to the members of the public who are watching, uh, or sorry, are here tonight and also watching the webcast. I would like to remind members of how to, I intend to deal with the guillotine this evening. I need to, uh, I, I need to, understanding order nine of the council procedures rules, I do intend to take a formal comfort break this evening and I will propose a 10 minute adjournment at an appropriate point during the meeting between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Where three hours have elapsed and the commencement of the meeting, I shall interrupt the meeting and the member speaking must immediately cease speaking and sit down. The meeting shall then dispose of the item, then under consideration as if the motion. That the question be now put has been carried. We will then vote on that and any remaining items. Moving. Declarations of interest. Members uh, are asked to consider whether you have any dis dis disclosable pecuniary and or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined by this meeting and, if so, to declare and state the nature of such interest. Please indicate now if you wish to declare any interest. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Ian Lewis, I have a personal interest to declare as a member of the Friends of Harrison Park, an area that's listed within lo the draft local plan. The same interest as my colleagues, Councillor Lewis and Councillor Rupp. The next one, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to hold everything up tonight. It is the last meeting of the municipal year, uh, and normally uh, the, the Mayor will give a speech about what he's done over the year and what sort of successful year it's been. Uh, very quickly, I would say that it has started off very, very slow because of COVID, obviously was, was here with us, but since then things have picked up and it's moved on very, very quickly. And what we've got now is a situation where we've completed 172 um, engagements. Um, and what I will do is when we go to the inauguration of Councillor Green, uh, I get the opportunity to speak then, and I will make a, uh, a speech then about some of the highlights of the year that we've had uh, and going through, and it's been a very, very nice year, I'll tell you. Um, but that's there. Uh, now then, there's a couple of other things I need to do tonight. Members, as this is the last scheduled council meeting of the municipal year, <coughs> I would like to take this opportunity to award... Where is it? Oh, it's in the box there. That's why I can't see it. Um, to award the Andy Day Memorial Cup for Councillor of the Year. And. Open the box. Open the box, yeah. to me now to, to nominate the person and this year I'm very very pleased to nominate um, a, a, a ward councillor who has worked tirelessly she's been in the job now for four years and I'm very very pleased to say that tonight's award winner is Jill Wood
I was also asked by Councillor Stuart Kelly to give consideration to making an award in memory of Councillor Andy Corkill, who sadly passed away last year. Andy was passionate about environmental issues and the suggestion was that the Mayor makes an award to an individual group, school or business who has done something demonstratively uh, on, of benefit to the environment. It is a proposal that I fully support and with that in mind, I would like to make an award to, now you won't know this name, I don't think a lot of people will know this name, um, to Neil Garnett. Uh, and Neil Garnett is the General Parks Manager in Birkenhead and his team uh, of volunteers. Um, and and I, I say that because under the climate change and the trees that we're all going to be planting and everything else, we've started well in Birkenhead. In fact, last week I was down there myself, planted a few, um, well, I didn't plant them, but I, I helped put the shovel there. Um, and, and it was um, a, a big occasion, it was well respected. And um, so I would like to, for this year, give it to that group and show that it's not just councillors who are doing the work, it's all the people that's doing the work in the, in the aim of climate change. So Neil will get it and, he, and what I'll do, I'll write a letter to him and basically say, please thank every single one of your park people who come out on a regular basis and plant the trees all over Birkenhead. So that, that's kind of I should also mention um, that I am aware there are um, not people who are not standing for this year's uh, re-election. Councillors Bruce Berry, Kate Cannon, Wendy Clements, Tony Cottier, Sam Frost, Adrian Jones, Moira McLaughlin, Les Rawlins, Chris Spiggs, Stuart Whittingham and Irene Williams. And I would like to thank them wholeheartedly um, from all the, your colleagues on the council for all the service that you've given uh, to this borough and to this council. I think the work that you've put in has been demonstrable. You can see it and you can read it. And, you know, they're going to be hard to change because you're going to have at least there, I think, eight, is, I've got it right, eight or nine new councillors coming on. Next year, it's, it's a big change, and so you want to say a few words, Jeanette, at this point, I think Thank it's right. And then Tom, I'll bring you uh, in as well, Tom. Uh, only, a few, only a few, Mr Mayor. Thank you for allowing me to do so. Uh, you read out uh, a, quite a long list there, and uh, from, from both, both parties really, but there's some individuals in my party that I will really miss, and I want to thank them individually for, for their hard work and their service to the Labour group. Um, Kate, Kate's our secretary, our hard work and secretary, our much believed as a secretary, I have to say. Um, we probably sometimes feel it's like herding cats trying to get things uh, arranged in the group. Um, you, you came in, in, in 2018 for Pens being Thing World Ward, and I hope it's not too long before we see you again. Tony, this was your last one, Council, and I think it will be one that you remember, hopefully forever. We certainly will, anyway. So thank you. Adrian, where's Adrian? Where do we start with Adrian? Adrian is definitely um, going to be a loss to the group. Uh, he first came on board in 1995 for Seacombe and he's also served as mayor between 2008 and 2009. Stuart, Stuart, you're there. Uh, another loss, you came on board just before me, you came on board in 2010 uh, representing the Upton Ward. Sam's not here tonight, um, but if she's watching, She'll also be missed. Sam brought a lot of gravitas and intellect to anything that she contributed to, and she'd be a great loss to Prenton. Irene is where? There, Irene. Um, you were elected in 2010 as well to Sir Bromborough, and another loss to the group. Um, and I wish you all every success 
going forward, and I'm fairly certain that some of you will be back, maybe in the All Outs, Phil. Um, but um, I genuinely feel that losing a big chunk of our group and a very talented and experienced chunk, hard to replace. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Mr Mayor. In the same vein, I'd like to extend uh, my best wishes to all retiring councillors. You know, everyone who puts their head above the parapet and stands for election in their local community yeah, deserves my admiration. If the hours can be long, um, the thanks little, and more than ever, the abuse can be strong. Um, but, however, we all in Wirral um, love our community and wish to see it succeed. And I'd just like to pay some personal tribute to the members of my group that will be standing down to tonight. Um, Councillor Bruce Berry. Um, Bruce is a real community councillor who never seeks any recognition for the public service he undertakes. However, it's important to place on record our thanks to Bruce for the eight years of service on, on the council and the community to Morton West and Saltville Massey. His wards and colleagues have asked me to specifically thank him for the tremendous support that he has given them. Bruce is never one to get afraid to get his hands dirty and has regularly helped brighten up his wall by planting initiatives assisting the work of Morning Bloom and numerous litter picks. Um, he's similarly given considerable time to sort of Massey Village Conservation Association, Tamashanta Farm, where he's secretary, and Lincoln Primary School, where he's school, school governor. Uh, Bruce is a great all-round councillor and was greatly met by his community and colleagues. Mr Mayor, Councillor Les Rollins is also standing down and is one of the council's most senior councillors, having served 24 years representing Ethel Ward. Always wants, always, Les is always born with a tail, and he and his wife Paula, who works for the council, thoroughly enjoyed their mayoral year. Les was able to combine his love for performing arts with a multitude of mayoral events he undertook in his mayoral year. I know Les was, quite rightly, very proud of the money he raised for his charities close to his heart the Alzheimer's Society, Classes Rich Hospital, League of Friends, and the Northwest Air Ambulance. Les, may wish you hope in the time away from council, enjoy the time retirement and spending time with your children and grandchildren and now have been a big part of your life. Mr Mayor, the final tribute I'd like to pay is to Councillor Wendy Clements. Um, sadly, Wendy can't be here at the last council meeting tonight. Well, she's contracted COVID, but I know she'll be watching on the webcast and I'd just like to say a few words about my war colleague. I think all councillors agree that Wendy is highly competent chairman of the Children, Young People and Education Committee. While members of that committee will attest that Wendy isn't one for um, just talking about cross party working, she actually gets on and does it. And Wendy isn't one for the trappings of the town hall. In fact, as a wall colleague, I've seen her first time that Wendy is the definition of a community councillor, one is more, who's more content when she's out and about in the ward in the community. And she's served the community in many guises over those years. Mr. Mayor, um, notably as a school governor, but now as a thriving chair of Bruce Association. So from a personal capacity as a war colleague, I'd like to thank Wendy uh, very much for her ever loyal and hard working to the group, the ward, which she will be missed on council. But I'm relieved to say Wendy's not hanging up her boots completely. She's going to carry on her positions in the community and I know she'll be keeping a watchful eye on all of us and we're all west of the chairman of the local conservative association. And Mr Mayor, I understand you have tributes to yourself and all the work you and CAP have done over the year. I'd just like to thank you for those and we'll say more about our annual council, but from my group, thanks for your service at the time. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I want to thank all those members who are retiring for the work they've done for their communities. For all those phone calls, they've had about planning applications at 10 o'clock at night. For all those times they've been in the supermarket queue when somebody's tapped them on the shoulder and said, I've got a problem with my road. Uh, for all those times that they were out with their families, perhaps a gentle stroll or even a visit to a local hostelry where somebody's come up and said, I hope you don't mind me asking you while I'm here. All those occasions when we've risen to the occasion and served our constituents fully, truly, and beyond what was expected of us. And Mr. Mayor, I don't think Councillor McLaughlin was mentioned, unless I'm mistaken. Can I say that Councillor McLaughlin devoted many years to social care, to the health service, and to 
ensuring that our plans for intermediate care, integrated care, and a service that meets the need of everyone have worked and will work in the future. I'd like to place on record a special thanks to her for that, but to all those members who've been with us and devoted those hours to public service. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I uh, just want to go back on one statement, please, if you don't mind. I forgot to say before, I've been notified of the following apologies. Councillors Clements, Cox, Greeny, Osanier, and their, uh, sorry, Greaves, Frost, and Spriggs. Any others, please? All back in now. Yeah. Right, thank you very much indeed for that. And then we move back to where I was up to. Um, Right, move to the minutes, uh, turn to item three. We are asked to approve the minutes of the council meetings held on the 6th of December 2021, 16th of February and the 28th of February 2022. I will move uh, approval of these minutes as a correct record. Do I have a second there? Thank you, Your Honour. All those in favour? Against? No. Abstentions? No. Thank you. Is that done? Um, this one is it? Public. public and member questions. Item number four. Public questions. Uh, we've got now, unfortunately, we, you know, uh, we, we do consider the whole thing, but we've got 30 minutes now time limit on this. Um, I've been notified of three public questions uh, and I refer, I, I refer now to the separate sheet. Um, and first question will be asked by Caroline Wright. Uh, ask Caroline to take a seat at the back where there is a public speaker. Name please, are you there, Caroline? Thank you. And please ask your question. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry about that. Good evening, everybody. Um, my question um, is as follows. The abrupt decision to cease beach management in Hoy Lake uh, without any risk assessment has caused continued strife and grief in a once unified community. Hoy Lake has become a political pawn, a conservative ward within a Labour constitution, con sorry, constituency, yet residents and voters have been treated with contempt by ma many Labour councillors. The motion by Alison Wright to review Hoy Lake Shore using a 40-60% split as a test site was denied. The motion by Andrew Gardner to review the conflicting information on Spartina which is a world-renowned non-native invasive species, was also denied by this council. A 13,000 strong petition to save Hoylake Beach without chemicals was completely ignored. A big thank you goes out to Councillor Phil Gil Gilchrist, who actually took the time to review the compromise suggestion which was raised by Hoylake Beach community, whereby he approached North East Lincolnshire Council, who had experienced a very similar predicament. The reply from North East Lynx Council was prompt and detailed. They obviously understood the difficult situation. Councillor Gilchrist shared all this information with you all on the 10th of November 2021. I believe he received acknowledgement from Councillor Gray, um, but it is beyond disappointing to hear that there was very little or no feedback at all to his email. The £30,000 beach report has landed belatedly a few weeks ago and shows that costs will be incurred in a both do-nothing or a do-everything scenario. Marshland is noted as the most likely development, which comes with the associated risks of rising beach levels, 
fresh water stagnant pools, mosquito infestation from the old drainage system, to name but a few risks. Hoy Lake is one of the three Wirral amenity beaches left. The town was built on the back of its seaside tourism trade. Given the budget deficit position, can this council afford to reject the compromise request from Hoy Lake Beach Community Volunteer Group? Can they incur additional costs and risks, including potential flooding, which is cited in the report, with a do-nothing scenario? Or will you respectfully start to work together and following the public cons consultation, act promptly to research and find a compromise which allows an amenity area? And as in the words of Steve Fox earlier, stop playing politics with people's lives. Mr Mayor, the report is not advocating one option or the other. The way the Council has approached this difficult issue is to provide the evidence and then use this as a basis for working with the community and developing the most appropriate solution for Hoy Lake within the constraints that apply. The Council recognises that as a compromise solution is likely to be required and is committed to working towards such an end. However, because of the statutory requirements of the Council because of the statutory requirements, the Council cannot say at this stage that it will definitely allow an amenity area, as that decision would require assent from Natural England. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Then can we move to question two? Um, to be asked by um, Kevin, Kevin Wright. Um, ask Kevin to take his seat if you could please. Thank you. Thank you, mate. <clears throat> Councillor Pat Cleary stated publicly on his blog dated the 19th of October 2021 the following, um, it's a quote, Dunes will defend us from sandstorms and sea storm surges without the need for expensive artificial defences such as currently being implemented for West Kirby at a cost of millions of pounds. Now that the Hoylake Beach report is out and it states in section 9.1, however, there is also a risk that the developing dune system could form a barrier against any overtop water flowing back to the sea and could thus enhance flooding in some locations. My question is, Pat, due to this risk of enhanced flooding, does, do you feel the report is scientifically inaccurate or will you admit there are some risks to be, to be faced should sand dunes be allowed to develop? Thank you. Pat. Thanks, Mayor. And thanks, Mr. Wright, uh, for the question. So the report you refer to contains two scenarios with respect to flooding and the size of dunes and whether they are a broken band or a continuous. In the first case, a broken band of dunes will not provide any advantage over still water flooding, but also will not prevent flood water from returning to the sea, as referenced on page 49 of the report. In the second scenario, a continuous band of high dunes, which would give protection in terms of still water level flooding, but also prevent any water which did overtop retreating to the sea as quickly. And that's on page 47 of the report. So this is an either or situation and would apply equally to a hard flood protection. In both a continuous or broken dune, as explained in the report, there is a considerable advantage to having a green beach, be that dunes or salt marsh, salt marsh. So in terms of wave energy reduction, that is the advantage of having a green beach. So this is the cause of most damage in storm surges, again as referenced in the report on page 64. So I welcome the publication of the Royal Haskening Report and see no reason to disagree with its findings. It is important to ensure that our approach to the management of the beach at Hoylake is underpinned by a scientific understanding of the processes that are underway and how we can best work with them to protect biodiversity, defend ourselves against climate breakdown and minimise climate impact. Thank you, Mayor. Did you get Jane Turner's Move now 
now to question three, and the question is from Mr. K. Randalls, and I am going to ask uh, the lawyer, Vicky Shaw, to read out um, on their behalf as uh, somebody is ill in the, in the home. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The question of Mr. Randalls is, the North Wirral foreshore is attracting an increasing number of overwintering waders and summer gulls and terns. This may be due to regular disturbance of roost sites in the adjacent Dee and Mersey estuaries, but may also be due to the areas of open intertidal mud and sand, free from vegetation and rich in invertebrates, attracting certain species such as the bar-tailed goodwit that prefer unvegetated intertidal sand and mud as feeding grounds. Allowing the natural succession of all areas of foreshore into salt marsh could therefore result in a loss of important feeding and roosting sites and a reduction in the internationally important numbers of wading birds for which the site is a proposed Ramsar site. Common cord grass often produces extensive monocultural swards of much less intrinsic value to wildlife and in many areas is considered to be a threat to bird feeding grounds on mudflats. UK Biodiversity Action Plan, Habitat Action Plan for Coastal Salt Marsh. Wirral Coastal Rangers promote Hoy Lake Beach as one of the best coastal bird watching sites in the North West. The above statement should sound familiar as these facts come from WBC very own 2010 Hoy Lake Beach Management Plan and highlights the importance of keeping the birds roosting and feeding sites as clear of vegetation. Now that the Royal Haskening Survey has confirmed that Hoy Lake's unique roosting site will be lost due to veg, veg, dense sorry, vegetation, I just want to reaffirm the importance of Hoy Lake's roosting area. This is the only exposed beach area above the high tide mark on the entire Northern Wirral coastline. That's how vital this area is to these birds. My question is, I would like to ask the Labour Party leader, is a do-nothing approach a realistic option for Hoy Lake's current wildlife who rely on unheeded access to all of these areas and what would be the consequences for these birds if WBC adopted that policy? Uh, Mr. Randall's also submitted some photographs with his question, which have been circulated to all members. Thank you, Vicky. Um, Jeanette? I'd like to thank Mr. Randall for his question. Uh, the impact of any beach management scheme will be subject to assessment under the Habitats regulations, when the impact of any proposals on all environmental features, including birds, will be assessed. Thank you. Next item is uh, B1, statements. No requests to make a statement have been made. B2, uh, petitions. I have been made aware of a number of petitions which councillors wish to submit. I will invite councillors to present the petitions in turn. Please note that persons presenting the petition may speak for up to one minute. Thank you. Would like to interview. Sorry, I would like now to invite uh, Councillor Jason Walsh to present a position with respect to crossing places on Mount Road, Bevington. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, this is a petition that has 722 online signatures and 31 paper signatures started by Judith Greer to, uh, to provide safe crossing points to uh, stores and woods across Mount Road, uh, much more green space. Um, give thanks and explain the position will now be referred to officers for consideration. Um, and I would now like to invite Councillor Paul Hayes to present a position in respect of road safety on the coastal drive. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got a petition supported by a number of residents of Smugglers Way and Mock Bedder Drive in Wallasey, calling for measures to address the problem of speeding vehicles on Coastal Drive. Thank you. I give thanks. And uh, an explained position will now be referred to officers for consideration. I would like to invite Councillor Leslie Rennie to present a position in respect of speed cameras 
on Bayswater Road. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a petition here supported by the residents of Bayswater Road and all the adjacent roads off that, requesting the installation of traffic speed cameras. I'm sure most members, um, if they're travelling in from um, the, um, the borough, <coughs> excuse me, coming into um, Wallasey and particularly coming here tonight, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, we have all witnessed you know, the heavily trafficked road of Bayswater Road. that in Mr Mayor in the hopes that we can avoid any further collisions um, and clearly any further injuries to people. Thank you. Thanks Leslie. Um, I give thanks and explain the position <coughs> will now be referred to officers for consideration. I would like to invite Councillor Ian Lewis to present a position in respect to Wallasey Library. Thank you Ian. Thank you Mr Mayor. Uh, I would like to present a petition organised by Wallasey resident Arlene Barry uh, and signed by 1,522 people, including many people in Wallasey, calling for Wallasey Village Library to be retained. Mr Mayor, I submit this petition to you this evening and request that it be included in the current consultation and that the lead petitioner or her nominee be invited to attend the future relevant meeting of that committee. Once again, I give thanks and explain the position will now be referred to officers for consideration. Does anyone else wish to submit a petition? Yes, please, Andrew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have three petitions. One is a petition for a planning uh, refusal just in Thurston Road, signed by numerous uh, local residents. I have a second application for a planning in Piper's End signed by for refusal, signed by numerous residents. I also have a petition signed by uh, local Hesel Whittle who requests traffic calming measures and a 20 mile per hour limit through and either side of the lower village Hesel. There's been an increase of traffic and excessive speed through the village recently and this and a lack of adequate payments makes us concerned and anxious about the potential for a fatal accident in this area. And that was signed by 255 Local residents from Hesel Lower, Lower Hesel Village. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And uh, that will be passed into officers of the Rodney Committee as well. Thank you. We now move to uh, members' questions. No questions have been submitted. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, matters requiring number five, well, now. Matters requiring approval or consideration by the Council. A. Whittle Local Plan 2021-37 Publication of Submission Draft Plan Regulation 19 and Submission to the Secretary of State for Examination Regulation 22 This is a referral from the Policy and Resources Committee held on the 16th of March 2022 I call on Councillor Jeanette Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. So moved, Mr Mayor. And I call on Councillor Yvonne Nolan to second. So seconded, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Poser of the motion. Councillor Williamson, do you wish to speak to this item? If so, you now have up to five minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, the preparation of the borough's new local plan has, after three years of intensive work, reached an important stage. The draft plan is now here before you this evening. Almost two years ago, as the COVID-19 pandemic was breaking, we completed consultation on the issues and op options documents. The issues and op options documents set out that the Council's preferred local plan option was to meet all of our housing and employment needs with existing urban areas brownfield first option and i'm proud of this achievement mr mayor that we're protecting our precious green belt something that is fundamental to us as a council despite the challenges of covid officers have continued to work on the preparation of the plan and the development of proposals for the regeneration of birkenhead responding to over 26,000 separate comments from some 1500 people and organizations we've listened to our local communities and have built the plan around regeneration, 
not just in Birkenhead, Mr Mayor, but in Liscard, in my ward, along Seaton Corridor, in New Brighton, just to name but a few areas. No green belt release is proposed, Mr Mayor. We are committed to protecting our green belt and protecting our environment. We have had to use the government standard method for calculating the housing numbers, and this is something we have sought extensive advice on. If approved by full council, the local plan will be subject to six weeks consultation before being submitted to the Secretary of State for examination. The plan will shape the future of the borough over the next 20 years, will address deep-seated deprivation, protect our valuable environments and promote physical, social and economic regeneration and will be underpinned with our social, with our social uh, and economic um, strategic vision to reduce inequalities. Uh, it, it would be remiss of me, Mr Mayor, not to thank our planning team who are here tonight, sitting at the back, for all their hard work in bringing this together and for, um, if she's watching, which I doubt it, but she might be Councillor Anita Leach, for all their hard work on this, bringing this to fruition. So I am really proud to move this tonight, Mr Mayor. Just hang on a second. I am uh, not aware of any amendments, so I propose we move to the debate. Okay. All those ready for the debate? Thank you, Stephen. There's two over there as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One behind you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The Council were told to reduce a local plan back in 2004. I'll just repeat that again, Mr Mayor. All councils, including this one, were told that they needed to produce a local plan in 2004. A plan that would have protected green belts. A plan that would have been the blueprint for world's development and regeneration. A plan that would have told developers where they could build, but more importantly, where they cannot build. A plan would have stopped the worry and angst of residents fearful of losing their green belt. It has taken this council 18 years to get here, and only then, after the intervention of a Secretary of State, falls in the council's hand. For, sadly, this is an all too common occurrence and frequent theme with this council. Mr. Mayor, it was only four years ago that the leader of the council who was then Cabinet Member for Finance, opened up the Council's checkbook and offered to loan £26 million to a golf developer to build 200 luxury homes on Greenbelt. And it was only in September that the leader of the Council opened up the Council's checkbook yet again to pay off those developers to half a million pounds in order to get out of the shoddy deal. And it was just over three years ago, Mr Mayor, that we saw Labour Cabinet Members in a secret meeting dividing up Greenbelt sites, and I'll quote the World Road here, based on their political preference. They lost their majority because of it. And thank God they did, Mr Mayor, because we won't see the progress we see before us today. And don't get me wrong, I welcome the leader of the Council on the Labour Group's demasking conversion to protecting World Greenbelt once it went into no overall control. But it would be missing me not to thank the others who have ensured that this local plan that delivers the regeneration to those that are part of the borough that desperately cries out and protects our green belt. To the 31 groups who have come together to form Wills Green Space Alliance and the most vocal campaigner, Mr Simpson, I want to say thank you for your tenacity and never giving up. To our late colleague on our side, Councillor Blakely, we all owe you a debt of gratitude. Your bullish campaigning, your numerous callings and extraordinary councils be fighting to protect Wheels precious green belt. And to my fellow councillors in this room, some officers, I'd like to thank you privately for the work you did privately and publicly. Mr Mayor, the draft local plan protects all green belts. It's robust. And I wish to place on my record also, as Councillor Williamson did to the council officers who worked so hard and diligently to get to this point. What this has done has unlocked hundreds of millions of regeneration money from government and it rapidly accelerated those plans. And it wouldn't be possible without such a strong local plan. And Mr.
customer deliver correctly, the local plant will bring thousands of jobs, highly skilled work and investment to our borough. Done correctly, it will be the blueprint for the next 50 years. Mr Mayor, make no mistake, the Conservative Group will continue to do what we've always done. We will stand ready to defend our green belt, not only by supporting the draft local plan tonight, but through the examination stage, where there's no doubt that developers will chance their arm for the potential litany of speculative applications. It's an incumbent on all councillors here tonight to support this plan, to protect our green belt and secure our regeneration for decades to come. And I commend the plan to council. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Next speaker is Councillor Ian Lewis. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can I begin by congratulating uh, New Brighton Councillor Paul Martin uh, on his first speech to council, um, clearly one that has all party support, uh, and was very pleased to, to vote for that. And I hope that he continues to speak to council with passion and with commitment that he demonstrated this evening. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd also like to uh, pay tribute to Councillor Cotier. Um, his remarks earlier this evening are proof of what we will lose when he is no longer a councillor, a loss indeed to Bevington and to this borough. And Mr Mayor, also, uh, perhaps strangely for some members of the Labour group, I'd like to pay tribute to a former political foe who, as the years went on, I learned to respect, and there is Councillor Moira McLaughlin, who is smirking in the background because he no doubt agrees with those remarks. Mr Mayor, Councillor McLaughlin, as we all know, sacrificed her party loyalty for her conscience, and that is a decision that can never be wrong. Mr Mayor, tonight we're at this point because of many people, not least because of council officers such as Keith Keeley, Alan Evans, and the Chief Executive Paul Satour. Also, in a way, Mr Mayor, former councillor Phil Davis. I realise his name is not a name that can be mentioned very often now in the Labour group, but Mr Mayor, it was his misguided actions and approach that inevitably led to the different approach that we now have before us. Mr Mayor, Wallasey Ward, for many, for those who know, is not blessed with great expanse of green belt, and as a result, the green spaces that we do have are even more valued by residents. The last two years has proved to us all, if proof was necessary, how important these places are for our residents. Last October, Councillor Leslie Rennie, Paul Hayes and I asked for several of these sites to be assessed.